Brought to you by wikivd.com South African Republic The South African Republic often referred to as the Transvaal, and sometimes as the Republic of Transvaal was an independent and internationally recognized country in Southern Africa from 1852 to 1902. The country defeated the British in what is often referred to as the First Boer War, and remained independent until the end of the Second Boer War on 31 May 1902 when it was forced to surrender to the British. The territory of the Tsar became known after this war as the Transvaal Colony. After the outbreak of the First World War a small number of Boers staged the Maritz Rebellion by declaring the reinstatement of the South African Republic and aligned themselves with the Central Powers. The rebellion was put down by British forces in February 1915. The land area that was once the Tsar now comprises all or most of the provinces of Gauteng Limpopo in Pumalanga and northwest in the northeastern portion of the modern Republic of South Africa. Zaud Afrikaanse Republic Tsar. Constitutionally, the name of the country was Many people also called the Tsar Transvaal, in reference to the area over the Vaal River including the British press and the press in Europe. In fact the name Transvaal was later so often used that later the British objected to the use of the real name. The British pointed out that the Pretoria Convention of 3 August 1881 referred to the Transvaal Territory, and that the Transvaal and the South African Republic did not have the same boundaries. However, in the London Convention dated 27 February 1884 a subsequent treaty between Britain and the Tsar, Britain acquiesced and reverted to the use of the true name the South African Republic. Transvaal the name of the South African Republic was of such importance that on 1 September 1900 the British declared by special proclamation that the name of the South African Republic be changed from South African Republic to the Transvaal and that the entire territory shall henceforth and forever be known as the Transvaal. This proclamation was issued during the Second Boer War. And whilst the Tsar was still an independent country, on 31 May 1902, the Treaty of Vereeniging was signed with the South African government, Orange Free State government, and the British government which also converted the Tsar into the Transvaal colony. On 20 May 1903 an intercolonial council was established to manage the colonies of the British government. The name Transvaal was finally changed in 1994, when the ANC government broke up the Transvaal area and renamed the Quarter Gauteng. Early history In Paleolithic times between 2.2 and 3.3 million years ago, hominids lived within the geographic area of the Tsar. The earliest hominid bones between 2.2 and 3.3 million years old were discovered at Sturkfontein in 1994. In 1938 Paranthropus robustus bones were found at Krom and During 1947 several more examples of Australopithecus africanus were uncovered in Sturkfontein. Formation the South African Republic came into existence on 17 January 1852, when the United Kingdom signed the Sand River Convention Treaty with about 40,000 Boer people, recognizing their independence in the region to the north of the Vaal River. The first president of the Tsar was Mardinus Wessel Pretorius elected in 1857. Son of Boa leader Andres Pretorius who commanded the Boers to victory at the Battle of Blood River. The capital was established at Pochefstrium and later moved to Pretoria. The parliament was called the Volksrad and had 24 members. Independence The Tsar became fully independent on 27 February 1884 when the London Convention was signed. 
The country independently also entered into various agreements with other foreign countries after that date. On 3 November 1884 the country signed a postal convention with the government of the Cape Colony, and later similarly with the Orange Free State expansion. On the November 1859 the independent republics of Leidenberg and Utrecht merged with the Tsar. On 9 May 1887 burghers from the territories of Stelaland and Goosen were granted rights to the Tsar franchise. On 25 July 1895 the burghers that took part in the battle at Zoutpansberg were granted citizenship of the Tsar. Constitution and Laws the Constitution of the South African Republic has been referred to as legally interesting for its time. It contained provisions for the division between the political leadership and office bearers in government administration. The legal system consisted of higher and lower courts and had adopted a jury system. The laws were enforced by the South African Republic Police which were divided into mounted police and foot police. On 10 April 1902 the magistrates' court powers were extended to increase the civil ceiling amounts and to expand criminal jurisdiction to include all criminal cases not punishable by death or banishment. Also established was a municipal government which waters run district court and the High Court of Transvaal. Religion Initially the state and church were not separated in the constitution of the Tsar. Citizens of the Tsar had to be members of the Dutch Reformed Church. In 1858 these clauses were altered in the constitution to allow for the Volksrad to approve other Dutch Christian churches. The Reformed Church was approved by the Volksrad in 1858 which had the effect of allowing Paul Kruger of the Gereformeerd Kirk to remain a citizen of the Tsar. The Bible itself was also often used to interpret the intention of legal documents. The Bible was also used to interpret a prisoner exchange agreement reached in terms of the Sand River Convention between a commando of the Tsar led by Paul Kruger and a commando of the Orange Free State. President Jacobus Nicolas Boschoff had issued a death sentence over two Tsar citizens for treason. Paul Kruger argued with President Boschoff that the Bible said punishment does not mean a death sentence and at the prisoner exchange it was agreed that the accused would be punished if found guilty. After double-checking Commandant Paul Kruger's Bible, President Boschoff commuted the sentences to lashes with this yambok. Citizenship Citizenship of the Tsar was legislated by the Constitution as well as Law No. 7 of 1882. As amended on 23 June 1890, citizenship was gained by being born in the Republic or by naturalization. The voting age was 16 years. Persons not born in the Republic could become citizens by taking the prescribed oath and procuring the letters of naturalization. The oath involved abandoning, discarding, and renouncing all allegiance and subjugation towards foreign sovereignties, and in particular their previous citizenship. Foreigners had to have been residing in the Republic for a period of two years be of good character and have been accepted as member of the Dutch Reformed or Reformed Church. On 20 September 1893 the Tsar Constitution was amended so that two-thirds of the Volksrad would have to agree to changes to the citizenship law. This Proclamation No. 224 also changed Law No. 7 with regards to voting. All citizens who were born in the Tsar or had obtained their franchise prior to 23 June 1890 would have the right to vote for both the first and second Volksrad and in all other elections. Citizens who obtained their franchise through naturalization after 23 June 1890 would be able to vote in all elections except those for the first Volksrad. Racialism 
the constitution promoted racialism as it treated European people differently from native people. Although slavery was illegal in the constitution, and foreigners were both discriminated against, black foreigners had fewer rights than the white counterparts. Black and Asian foreigners could never become citizens of the Tsar. At this time in history this was very similar to many other European countries as well as in the New World. Discrimination on the basis of race was prevalent in the Tsar, and black British subjects were forced to reside in ghettos outside cities with Asians and blacks, whilst whites were free to live anywhere. One of the justifications often used by the Tsar government for its institutional racism was that sanitation and regard to public health necessitated that measure of segregation. Language The language spoken and written by the citizens of the Tsar was High Dutch. This High Dutch was carried over into the Transvaal colony and later the Union of South Africa. Up to 1925 the High Dutch language was still in use. In fact there were four main languages, High Dutch Lower South African Dutch High Afrikaans and English. On 3 October 1884 the Volksrad stated that they had reason to believe that in certain schools in pure Dutch was being used. The Volksrad issued Proclamation 207 and compelled the Superintendent of Education to apply the language law enforcing the exclusive use of the Dutch language. On 30 July 1888 the High Dutch language was declared the only language to be used in the country, not only in government but also in schools, trade and general use. All other languages were declared foreign. These changes to the Tsar laws are made the use of all other foreign languages illegal in the Tsar. Use of any foreign language was subject to criminal penalty and fine of 20 South African rands pond. For each offence, the British similarly had declared English to be the only language spoken in the Cape Colony some decades earlier. To outlaw the Dutch language, the discovery of gold in 1885 led to a major influx of foreigners. By 1896 the language of government and citizens remained Dutch but in many marketplaces, shops and homes the English language was spoken. War with Mappella and Macapan 1854 Hendrik Pockieter was elected at the Assembly of 1849 as Commandant General for Life, and it became necessary to avoid strife to appoint three commandants general all possessing equal powers. Commandant General A.W.J. Pretorius became commandant general of the Potchef Strum and Rustenburg districts. On 16 December 1852 Commandant General Potgita died and his son Piet Potgita was appointed in his stead as commandant general of the Lindenburg and Zoutpansberg districts of the Tsar. There were some disputes over cattle which Mappella was raising on behalf of Pockita, and earlier Commandant Schultz had confiscated a large number of rifles and amounts of ammunition, rifle repair equipment and materials of war from the home of English missionary Reverend Livingston. Livingston admitted to storing these for Sekeli and, by this he was acting in breach of the Sand River Convention of 1852 which prescribed that neither arms nor ammunition should be supplied to the natives. In 1853, the brother of Hendrik Potgieter Hermann Potgieter was called to Mappella to come and cull the elephant population. When Potgieter arrived Mappella took Potgieter his son his groom and a few other burghers to show them where the elephants were. On the way Mappella and hundreds of natives attacked the Potgieter party. They killed Andries Pockita, the son of Hermann Pockita, and then dragged Pockita up a hill where they proceeded to skin him alive. They stopped once they had torn the entrails from his body. At the same time of these events, Makarpan attacked and killed an entire convoy of women and children traveling to Pretoria. The two chiefs had concluded an agreement 
to murder all the Europeans in the respective districts and to keep the cattle that they were raising for the Europeans. General Piet Potgita set out with 100 men from Zoutpansberg and Commandant General Pretorius left Pretoria with 200 men. After the commandos met up they first attacked Makarpan and the natives were driven back to their caves in the mountains where they lived before. The Boers held them at siege in their caves and eventually hundreds of women and children came out. Orphan children of the native tribes were Ngibo Ectat Autorizati Vorden Landrost, or translated into English booked in strictly controlled by legal process, at appointed Boer families to look after them until they came of age, with the exception that children so registered had to be released. At age 16 the commando would return all such children to the nearest Landrost district for registration and allocation to a Boer family. As there were slavers and other criminals dealing in children any burger found in possession of an unregistered minor child was guilty of a criminal offence. These children were also often called Orleans, in reference to being overly used to the Dutch culture and in reference to a hand-raised orphan sheep a Hanslam. These children even after their 16th birthday and being free to come and go as they please never reconnected with their own culture and own language and except for surviving and being cared for in terms of food and shelter, were basically forcefully divorced from their native tribe forever. Among the casualties of this war was Commandant General Potgita. The natives were armed with rifles and were good shots. The general was killed by a native sniper on the ridge of a trench and his body recovered by then Commandant Paul Kruger whilst under heavy fire from the natives. What remained of the Joint Commando, now under command of General Pretorius focused their attention on Mapella. By the time the commando had reached Mapella the natives had fled. A few wagons bloody clothes, chests and other goods were discovered at a cop near Mapellis town. Mapella and his soldiers escaped and with their rifles and ammunition intact and Mapella was only captured much later in 1858. Civil War 1861-1864 Commandant General Schwerman did not accept the 20th of September 1858 proclamation by the Volksrad, where the members of the Christologic Jeriformia Church would be entitled to citizenship of the Tsar. Consequently Paul Kruger was not accepted as a citizen and disallowed from political intercourse. Acting President van Rensburg called a special meeting of the General Council of the Hervendkirk, which then voted in a special resolution to allow members of the Reformed Church access to the franchise. Sekakin War of 1876 in 1876 a war between the Tsar and the Bapidi broke out over cattle theft and land encroachment. The Volksrad declared war on the petty leader Sekakun on 16 May 1876. The war only began in July 1876. The president of the Tsar Burgers led an army of 2,000 Burgers and was joined by a strong force of Swazi warriors. The Swazis joined the war to aid Mampuru, who was ousted from his position of chieftain by Sekakun. One of the early battles occurred at Botse below Mission Station on 13 July 1876 against Johannes Dinkwanyan, who was Sekakun's brother. The Boer forces were led by Commandant Kutsi and accompanied by Swazi warriors. The Swazi warriors launched a surprise and successful attack while the Boers held back. Seeing this the Swazis refused to hand over to the Boers any spoils from the battle thereafter leaving and returning to Swaziland. Dinkwanyan's followers also surrendered after this campaign. First Boer War 1880 1881 on 12 April 1877 Britain issued a proclamation called Annexation of the SA Republic, 
to the British Empire in the proclamation the British claimed that the country was unstable, ungovernable, bankrupt and facing civil war. The unsuccessful annexation did not suspend self-government and attempted to convert the Tsar into a British colony. The South African Republic viewed this proclamation as an act of aggression and resisted. Instead of declaring war the country decided to send a delegation to United Kingdom and the United States to protest. This did not have any effect, and the First Boer War formally broke out on 20 December 1880. The First Boer War was the first conflict since the American Revolution in which the British had been decisively defeated and forced to sign a peace treaty under unfavorable terms. It would see the introduction of the khaki uniform, marking the beginning of the end of the famous Red Coat. The Battle of Lang's Neck would be the last occasion where a British regiment carried its official regimental colors into battle. The Pretoria Convention of 1881 was signed on 3 August 1881 and ratified on 25 October 1881 by the South African Republic. The Pretoria Convention of 1881 was superseded in 1884 by the London Convention and in which the British suzerainty over the South African Republic was relinquished. The British government in the London Convention accepted the name of the country as the South African Republic. The convention was signed in duplicate in London on 27 February 1884 by Hercules Robinson S.J.P. Kruger S.J. Dutoir and N.J. Smith and later ratified by the South African Republic Volksrad. In 1885 extremely rich gold reefs were discovered in the Tsar. The South African Republic burghers were farmers and not miners and much of the mining fell to immigrants. The immigrants were also referred to as outlanders. By 1897 the immigrants had invested over 300 million British pounds in the Tsar goldfields. Malar Boch War the Melar Boch War was between Chief Malar Boch of the Bohananwa people and the South African Republic government, led by Commandant General Pete Joubert. Malbok refused to pay taxes to the Transvaal after it was given back to the Boers in 1881 by the British, which resulted in a military drive against him by the South African Republic. Second Boer War 1899-1902 Britain first attacked the independent country of South Africa in December 1895. The Jameson Raid. After that failed attack the British started building up massive numbers of troops and amounts of resources at the borders of the Tsar. Then they demanded voting rights for the 50,000 British nationals and the 10,000 other nationals in South Africa. Even though none of these nationals were at that time South African citizens, Kruger rejected the British demand and called for the withdrawal of British troops from the ZAR's borders. When the British refused, Kruger declared war against Britain. Britain received assistance from Australia, Canada and New Zealand as well as forces and citizens of colonies like the Colony of Natal and the Cape Colony. The Second Boer War was a watershed for the British Army in particular and for the British Empire as a whole. The British used concentration camps where women and children were held without adequate food or medical care. The abhorrent conditions in these camps caused the death of 4,177 women and 22,074 children under 16 death rates were between 344 and 700 per 1,000. The Treaty of Vereeniging was signed on 31 May 1902. The treaty ended the existence of the Tsar and the Orange Free State as independent Boer republics and placed them within the British Empire. The Boers were promised eventual limited self-government which was granted in 1906 and 1907. The Union of South Africa was established in 1910. Economy and Transport 
The discovery of gold during the Witwatersrand gold rush in 1886 changed the economic fortunes of the formerly impoverished Tsar. The city of Johannesburg was founded as a gold mining town in the same year. Within ten years it would be the largest city in the entire southern Africa, surpassing Cape Town. The discovery of gold allowed the construction of a railway network in the Tsar. Most railroads in the Tsar including the line from Pretoria to Lorenzo Marques in Portuguese East Africa were constructed by the Netherlands South African Railway Company. The construction of the Pretoria Lorenzo Marques line allowed the Tsar access to harbour facilities not controlled by the British Empire, a key policy of Paul Kruger who deemed it vital to the country's long-term survival. Flag The national flag of the Tsar featured three horizontal stripes of red, white and blue, with a vertical green stripe at the hoist and was known as the Vierkala. The former national flag of South Africa had, as a part of a feature contained within its central white bar, a horizontal flag of the Transvaal Republic. Brought to you by Wikivd.com Would you like to know more?